All right, so one more example here, finding the interval and radius of convergence. So here we have the series from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x plus 2 raised to the n over n plus 1 times the natural logarithm of n plus 1. So again, just one more time, use the good old ratio test. So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity. Again, uh, the alternating part, the negative 1 to the n, when we put that in absolute value, that's just going to, uh, we can just drop that. So we'll have x plus 2 raised to the n plus 1 power. We'll have n, uh, we'll replace the n with n plus 1, so we'll be left with n plus 2. Then we'll have the natural logarithm again of n plus 1 plus 1, or n plus 2. And then uh, in the numerator, when we flip and multiply, we'll have n plus 1 times the natural logarithm of n plus 1 all over x plus 2 raised to the first power, or excuse me, x plus 2 raised to the n power. I'm already trying to simplify. So we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity. So, okay, so our x plus 2 raised to the n plus 1 over x plus 2 to the n. That does leave us with an x plus 2 to the first power in the numerator. Then we've got n plus 1 over n plus 2. And then we've got the natural logarithm of n plus 1 over the natural logarithm of n plus 2. Well, as n goes to infinity, uh, n plus 1 over n plus 2, since the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, this limit's simply going to go to positive 1. We can take the ratio of the coefficients. Um, I believe the same thing's going to happen with the natural logarithm, but again, if you want to think about that kind of off to the side, we can use L'Hopital's rule because the natural logarithm of n plus 1 over the natural logarithm of n plus 2, that's going to be infinity over infinity. But if we use L'Hopital's rule, we'll have 1 over n plus 1 over 1 over n plus 2. But again, if we bring this up to the numerator and flip and multiply, well, then we would have the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 2 over 1. Again, the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. The coefficients are both 1s. So this limit's also going to equal a positive 1. So really, we're just going to be left with the absolute value of x plus 2. Well, again, we want this, the absolute value of x plus 2, to be less than 1. So that tells us that x plus 2 is going to be in between negative 1 and positive 1. Well, if we subtract 2, we'll get negative 3 is less than x is less than negative 1. So now we'll have to go back and check the endpoints uh, individually. So let's see, if we check the endpoints uh, individually, we'll have the series n equals 1 to infinity. We've got negative 1 to the n. When we plug in negative 3, we're going to have another negative 1 to the n over n plus 1 times the natural logarithm of n plus 1. Well, let's see. Uh, we could make this negative 1 times negative 1 raised to the n. That would just be positive 1 to the n. So really, we're left with 1 over n plus 1 ten times the natural logarithm of n plus 1. So let's see here. Um, I think I see a good way to... Uh, evaluate this one. So now we want to figure out whether or not uh, this series is going to converge or diverge. So there's, you know, certainly a couple different ways we can do it. One way I see to do it, I think, is we can just use the integral test. So from 1 to infinity of 1 over x plus 1 times the natural logarithm of x plus 1 dx. So Let's work on this one here a little bit. I think we can do a u substitution here. So u, we can let that be the natural logarithm of x plus 1. Our du would be 1 over x plus 1 dx. So if you want to think about this as being an improper integral for just a second, we'll drop the, the limits of integration. Um, really, we would just have, so the 1 over x plus 1 dx, that's our du. And then the natural logarithm of x plus 1, that's our u. So we'll get the natural logarithm of the absolute value of u plus c, or the natural logarithm of the natural logarithm of x plus 1 
plus c. So that means when we integrate this, again, we'll replace our infinity with a t. We'll take the limit as t goes to infinity. But once we've integrated, again, we get the natural logarithm of the natural logarithm of x plus 1. Again, we'll have to evaluate this from 1 to t. But when we plug this in, we'll have the natural logarithm of the natural logarithm of t plus 1 minus the natural logarithm of the natural logarithm of, I guess, let's see, positive 2. And that part, again, I really don't care about. Um, I care about whether this, the, uh, the limit portion converges or diverges. But as t goes to infinity, well, this is going to go to infinity. The natural logarithm of a large number goes to infinity. And again, you're taking the natural logarithm again of a large number. So this is going to go off to infinity, which is a divergent improper integral. So that tells us that the series diverges. All right, so we know that negative 3 is not going to be in the interval of convergence. If we plug in negative 1, let's see, where would our original series go? If we plug in negative 1, we've got the series n equals 1 to infinity. So we'll have negative 1 to the n. When we plug in negative 1, we're just going to get positive 1 to the n, which is just 1. And then we've got n plus 1 times the natural logarithm of n plus 1 in the denominator. So now we've got an alternating series. Well, the alternating series test, again, two things. If we take the limit as n goes to infinity, so we'll get rid of the negative 1 to the n, of 1 over n plus 1 times the natural logarithm of n plus 1, well, we have to ask ourselves, does that equal 0? Well, as n goes to infinity, the denominator is going to get large. 1 over a large number uh, certainly is going to approach 0, so that's satisfied. The other thing is, does it decrease? Well, again, as n increases, n plus 1 is certainly going to increase. The natural logarithm also increases. So both of these functions are increasing in the denominator. 1 over that is going to make it decrease, so that condition is also satisfied. So that tells us that we do have a convergent alternating series. Okay, so it says then our interval of convergence The interval of convergence will be, let's see, we said negative 3 was out because we got a, a divergent improper integral when we tested that one. Um, we said that negative 1 is included because we had a convergent alternating series. So that's our interval of convergence. The radius of convergence, again, from negative 3 to negative 1, that's, you know, I always think about it in distances. That's 2 units long. We divide it by 2. We'll be left with 1, and that will be our radius of convergence.